Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular day, where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I'll review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular dude. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And now let's do one with Slapped Ham. Weird and scary rituals performed around the world. Let's check this out. How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some weird and scary rituals that are being performed around the world. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more mysterious and eerie content just like this. Voodoo. A witch bottle is a unique ritual. Average people typically create them to find protection against unknown energies and spirits. They're usually filled with vile ingredients. Historically, these bottles have either been made by folk healers or a trusted witch. If one believed that they knew someone possessed by a spirit, the person's urine, nail clippings or hair were a pivotal ingredient of the bottle. These bottles were also filled with needles, pins, rosemary and red wine. The belief is that the spirits will be attracted to the victim's ingredients, trapped by the pins and needles, forced to drown in the red wine and banished by the rosemary. These bottles were typically hidden away in the furthest corners of one's property. The first mention of a witch bottle appears in a 1681 book by Joseph Glavel, Seducimus Triumphatus, or Evidence Concerning. I guess it kind of makes sense because it's all a part of that person. I mean, if you think that they're attracted to that person, that their urine, their toenails, whatever, they're all a part of that person. I'm not going to go out and do it though concerning witches and apparitions. These bottles were constructed to bring peace to a household and to drive away malicious spirits. They're quite complex to study since they were sometimes made by witches and other times to drive witches away. A more recent example of witch bottles being used in the United States dates back to the Civil War. It's said that Union soldiers may have buried witch bottles in order to keep themselves safe from Confederate troops. This is only a theory, as it's highly possible troops would have had no other way to dispose of common witch bottle ingredients such as urine, without creating a historical misnomer. Hmm, that's weird. Frog coffins are a form of folk magic performed in Finland. Just as the name implies, frogs were put into tiny coffins and often buried in secret locations. Dating back to the early 20th century, these weird rituals were actually meant to work as a type of counter magic, just like witch bottles. Generally, frogs are chosen to represent amphibian and aquatic life. The initial lore of the frog coffin involved taking the luck of a successful fisherman and harnessing it for the folk magic of the frog coffin. That luck is then diffused into magic and reflected back at malicious spirits. This the is recording all uses of stuff, frog coffins man. range from benevolent attempts to cure epilepsy to malevolent intent to kill. It was thought that the magic generated by such coffins was powerful enough to accomplish a wide range of effects. Folklore archives from all over Finland document the many instances of these coffins having been buried for multiple purposes. The consistent factor between them is the importance of the coffin itself. Some similar coffins have been found in the area containing other animals and objects. However, because their method and intent seem to be the same, these objects are often grouped together with frog coffins. It is worth noting that many of these coffins have been found in churches all over Finland due to the structural integrity and longevity of such buildings over the years. Have you ever heard of a frog coffin? No, never. Let me know in the comments section below. I think I'll just stick to the mainstream stuff, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in any of this stuff. The practice I'm of offering in food and libations it, to the dead is widespread. The form and method may have changed throughout history, but it is a common pastime. 
It's noted that the practice of pouring a small amount of wine on a grave has long been popular between Egypt and Greece. In ancient Rome, this process was taken to an entirely new level. Libation tubes were made to flow directly into the inside of graves. This meant the dead could partake in food and drink in a purer form. These offerings typically first came during a feast known as Cena Novemdialis. This marked the end of the nine-day Roman grieving period after a loved one's death. The family would share a meal at the loved one's grave, pouring food and drink down the libation tube. This and other Roman celebrations were later put to an end by Christian leadership. These rituals were considered pagan and offensive. Mm. A tradition of pouring vodka onto the graves of loved ones lives on in Russia today. Some Chinese cultures offer wine or tea at the tombstones of the deceased. Japanese culture puts particular emphasis on making careful offerings at the shrines of the dead. The Mexican holiday of Dia de los Muertos is well known for its offerings. The graves of loved ones are populated with large amounts of their favourite food and drink. These are later enjoyed by the living. While these practices are so widespread, the slight cultural differences in how they're carried out is worth noting. These practices typically involve sharing food or drink between the living and the dead. The idea is to replicate the feeling of sharing a meal with a loved one, even in death. Huh. <sighs> Never thought of that. Some of you may not realise we've launched a Slapped Ham subreddit. If you have scary photos or videos you'd like to submit and share, our subreddit is the place to do it. It's also an awesome place to join the Slapped Ham community and see what other weird and wonderful things people are digging up. Those who have joined already have been sharing some seriously creepy stuff. I highly recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description box below. Like many of the weird rituals mentioned on this list, the tradition of hiding shoes and boots was carried out for different reasons. Shoes were often hidden in order to protect a home against spirits. For some, it was a chance to perform benevolent magic working as a fertility charm. The practice dates back to the 14th century and was widespread in Britain. These shoes and boots were typically hidden in homes, often inside of walls. But they were also hidden in businesses or factories. There's nothing really weird about that, I mean, I don't understand why, accidents. But... Whether or not they worked, we can't be sure. Though these shoes have provided historians with an accurate picture of shoes throughout the ages. The hidden shoes were typically worn out and in need of repair, discarded because they are of no more use. There are differing theories as to the true purpose of the ritual. Some believe the scent attached to the shoes and boots was thought to draw in friendly spirits, who would then bring a household good luck. Others see the scent of the shoes as a sort of trap that would lure in... You know, it would be natural to say uh, it's all a bunch of bull or whatever, but who knows? I mean... We don't know everything. I mean, it could could help bring in good luck. You just don't know. Evil spirits that could then be banished for good. Either way, the ritual was so widespread that thousands of such shoes have been discovered all over Britain. Before we take a look at a truly strange ritual that was performed throughout Britain, Remember to hit that subscribe button, then click that bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we upload our scary and mysterious videos. Also, remember to pulverize that like button if you're enjoying our content. Pulverize it. Perhaps the weirdest of weird rituals on this list is the historical practice of hiding dead or mummified cats in the walls of buildings. Okay, now that's Oddly weird. enough, these cats seem to be widely found in the same buildings as boots and witch bottles. This suggests superstitious people of the time often found themselves doubling or tripling down on protective charms for their home. No, that's, that's it's thought that the idea good. of mummifying cats was lifted from the ancient Egyptian practice. Cats were deified in Egypt so some of that reverence made its way over to Britain. Associated with fertility, justice and power, it's thought that this reverence was reflected in these slightly weird and scary rituals. What is interesting about this ritual is that there's often debate among scholars in regard to the particular instances. 
In many cases, it appears highly likely that a household cat had simply got stuck in a crawl space and died, yeah. making it seem as though a ritual had taken place. However, in the hundreds of other cases in question... Cats are always into everything, so that wouldn't surprise me. Not a bit. These cats appear to have been posed on purpose. They've been made to appear as though they're on the hunt or in a defensive position. In these instances, it seems clear that the cat's been posed to take on the role of the protective deity of one's home. Perhaps even more apropos is the thought that in addition to driving away witches, these cats were meant to ward off the familiars of witches, who were often said to take the form of cats. Hmm. Wow. That was weird and scary rituals performed around the world. There wasn't many of them that I thought were really scary. They were some of them that were strange, but I don't know. How about a joke? Guy walks into a bar and he says, "Excuse me, what's the Wi-Fi password?" The bartender says, "You need to buy a drink first. The guy says, oh, "Well, okay, I'll have a coke." The bartender says, that's $3. The guy says, there you go. So what's the Wi-Fi password? The bartender says, you need to buy a drink first. No spaces, all lowercase. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag mean gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, tell all your friends. Leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.